Hi, Little Maker. It is that time again. Another awesome story time from the Cyberarium by me, Miss Patty. Today we're going to be reading Shel Silverstein's The Giving Tree. Shel Silverstein is well known for his books of poetry for young readers. He's written books like A Light in the Attic and Where the Sidewalk Ends. I hope you enjoy this one. This is also a very popular book of his, The Giving Tree. Enjoy. The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Published by HarperCollins Publishers. It looks like Shel Silverstein dedicated to someone special by the name of Nikki. This is a dedication page. It also always is at the beginning of the book. Once there was a tree and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches. Can you see where he is? Yeah, these are his two little feet sticking out there. He's climbing and swinging from the last branch on the side. And eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree. He gave it a big hug right there. <laughs> very, very much. He even went ahead and put a heart that says me and T for tree. And the tree was very happy. But time went by. And the boy grew older. And the tree was often alone. Then one day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, come boy, come and climb on my trunk and swing from my branches <clears throat> and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I am too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy and she said, come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I am too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children. And so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house, but you may cut off my branches and build a house, then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come boy, she whispered, come and play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you could sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back. I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. 
I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down, sit down and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end. So many ways trees serve us every day. We live among them. They're just wonderful. I love the story. The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Our second book is titled Trees. It is filled with poems written by Verley Hutchins. Also included are beautiful trees illustrated by Ying Ying Song. Published by Simon & Schuster. We thank Simon & Schuster for providing permission for us to read this book together. Trees. Each tree offers a story, a clue, a dance that makes it its very own self. Maple sings to the heavens reaching out. She offers her precious sap to celebrate and re the return of the light and sweeten the last days of winter. Aspen, tall and graceful, dances on her tippy toes. Her golden leaves like castanets shimmer in the breeze. Oak stands strong, rooted deeply in the earth. His mighty branches held out just so, palms up to receive the joy of birds. Silly palm, plain and skinny, doesn't have one single branch. She saves all her leaves for her most, her most amazing hat. <laughs> Shy pussy willow takes center stage one week in spring when kitten velvet buds adorn her modest twigs. Apple tree, wise and gnarled, bends low, his branches weighed down with round red fruit and age. Little red bud plays hide and seek in bare branched woods until pink purple giggles burst forth and give her hiding place away. The spruce, in blue porcupine armor, aims for the sky like an arrow, his heart soars. Dogwood bows beside the walk, welcoming the guest. He offers treats on silver trays, canopies of sunshine and pollen. Sycamore, the fashion queen, wears a jigsaw puzzle gown and big flashy leaves, fuzzy round baubles dangle from her ears. White pine, unruly uncle, large and messy, shirt tails flying, buttons a kilter, shaggy hair unkept, he laughs too loud. Willow dances in her narrow kimono with elegant sweeping sleeves wafing in gentle wind. <clears throat> Birch, when other trees wear leafless black, struts in royal ermine robes. Beautiful. What a gorgeous design, right? It's like white birch with those patterns. The red robin. And last, of course, but not least, the sequoia holds memories for the tribe of the trees telling the tales from another age before the time of saws. Trees. Little Makers, I hope you really like the books that we read today. I hope that you also have some trees uh, that you have around you that you enjoy in so many different ways. When I was growing up, I grew up in New York City and in the city there weren't a lot of trees, but I was lucky enough to live next to a really big old weeping willow tree. 
The weeping willow tree is one of the ones that go all the way over and cover, uh, just like the one that we were reading about. Um, it kind of reminded me when we were reading right here, where it talked about the willow. Well, what was really great about growing up with a tree like this around is that I was able to go underneath it when it would rain and I would only feel a little bit of rain so it would choose it would be like a really big umbrella for me so that was a lot um, of fun I also used it as a clubhouse I would make pretend that it was my very own clubhouse I'd also swing from the branches and what I would find underneath it were lots of worms and I would collect them and put them on the trunk and just kind of watch them uh, travel on on it. I remember it and it was a lot of good memories and I went ahead and I took my daughters to visit the tree where I would play so I understand like Shel Silverstein's The Giving Tree how that there's, there are trees around you that could be really special to you so I hope you also have that experience. I hope you like the books and I will see you next week.